Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. We have the brand new 2020 Rockwood 2604WS. It's their ultralight model. We want to tell you all about it and a lot of the features that we liked and why we bought it. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. guys just joining us for the first time maybe you stumbled upon this video welcome and let us tell you just a little bit about ourselves uh, we are homeowners we're looking to go into full-time RVing on this windy cool day in uh, Northeast Ohio and we had a, a smaller RV that uh, we did a lot of work on and it's currently for sale let me show you over here you can see it there um, if you want to check out the video prior on that you can it's shows you all the details and actually we did a for sale video on it if you want to go back and look at it but we wanted to get into something a little bit bigger whenever we actually travel full-time and uh, this was it it took us about three and a half years to dial into this RV whenever you're shopping for a new RV the one thing to be aware of is that you're only gonna find one that's gonna cover about 80% of your wants and needs if you get close to 80% buy it go ahead and get it and don't waste any more time uh, we found this model uh, previous years of this model about two years ago and uh, we should have probably acted on it then however because we didn't there's a, a couple new features on the newer one that we kind of like and we're glad that we had waited but let's go ahead and talk about this RV and give you all the details and show you all the ins and outs uh, so we're gonna start with the outs the outside and it's very dirty got caught in the rain when we were coming home uh, we optioned it up pretty heavily and uh, you can see here that the uh, complete loaded weight the highest weight that this RV is rated for is 8,782 pounds that's with all the stuff that's in here that you know tanks some of them full some of them not and the payload is uh, 2,219 pounds now that doesn't include the uh, full freshwater tank um, if you have a full freshwater tank uh, at that point your weight that you can uh, be at uh, is going to drop by of course the weight of the tank which this tank which is one of the nice things that we like about it is a, a 60 gallon freshwater tank uh, the gray water tanks 45 gallons and the black water tank is 45 gallons we have on that small RV a 48 gallon freshwater tank 45 gray 45 black we got used to it we know how far how long we can boondock or dry camp before we need to uh, get our water uh, flushed out and uh, get new water in there so this one fit the bill nicely as far as the exterior this one is the white option uh, as far as the main part of it you can see here you know white and this being white these colors are essentially the same on even the uh, other ones which is a little bit darker of a tone uh, whenever you get this from Rockwood you will get a double battery box that will hold how many batteries two 24 series marine batteries if you guys don't know again just stumbled on this Heidi works in an automotive store for the last 20 years and she definitely knows that 24s will fit in there I thought that we could get two 27s she said no way I said maybe nope she's right as far as uh, the weight distribution that's something we put on there we're going to be going to something else a little bit later this does come with a uh, relatively nice power jack I haven't found anything so far about this power jack that I don't like uh, except for that the birds are making decorations on it uh, you know typical power jack nothing out of the ordinary it's 3500 pounds rated uh, it does give you a seven pin uh, plug holder on the side of the RV direct from uh, Rockwood again very nice two 30 pound tanks with a uh, switch over automatic switch over regulator just like you would think on these newer RVs and of course you can choose which tank you want to draw from in case uh, you want to switch out the tanks and one's empty you don't have to disconnect and turn off your propane just to refill one of them you just flip it over to the one you want you can see here you've got solar on the side this is a uh, 20 amp it's rated for 20 amp uh, solar panel that uh, you know those suitcase panels that's basically what that is the tongue weight on this roughly is 795 pounds whenever it's empty uh, basically no water in the tank 
and they do run a little bit heavier uh, that's just the way they're doing on the new designs compared to the older one um, you know that one only has about 10 maybe 12 percent tongue weight when empty of what the total weight is of the trailer these run a little bit heavier and it's a little bit safer to go that way uh, this here is docking lights whenever those are on uh, that's this light here and that will help you of course whenever you're backing up now you can turn this light on also that may help a little bit but not as much uh, as this one here most people have some sort of a flashlight <laughs> that they'll take care of most of their uh, um, hooking up at night situations which we've done in the past staying on this side of the RV which there's a lot to talk about uh, you can see the uh, wardrobe slide that's on there we'll put this out in a little bit but I wanted to show you what it looked like inside with them in and then there's a larger super slide back there you're gonna notice this one of the biggest features what do you think about this Heidi it's awesome these are some really big openings, and I know the camera's not going to necessarily cover this well, but these are motion lights. Now, I can turn them off, uh, but they're motion lights. If I move over there enough, that light would kick on also. Uh, there are two emergency cranks, uh, one to lower the jacks down, and I believe also the uh, tongue jack, and then the other one is for the super slide. In case the super slide fails, uh, there's a, a way to crank that in. Um, it, as you can see there's stuff in here uh, we haven't added anything in here but this rubber pad this is a shelf that hangs on the outside on the other side of the RV by the entrance door and then this is a grill that is included both of these things are included uh, it's a gas grill with a, a hose connection that is set up for propane we'll talk about that in a little bit and uh, this is all something that comes with the RV these are options that came with the RV not from the dealer but from the manufacturer I'm trying to keep that mosquito out of there these are all slam latches very nice and it's well thought of because you know you don't want that swinging up with that kind of a, a thing there now as far as the underside I'm going to talk about that a little bit you can see you've got pull handles um, even though your pipes are exposed up on the pipes a little ways are heated pads we optioned for the heated tanks the underbelly is vented in case it gets moisture in there there's condensation always off those tanks but it is vented but it's also heated by the ductwork that's running through and around those tanks uh, but we opted for the electric heated tanks so that it will keep your fresh water your black tank and your gray tank uh, from freezing up for the most part I mean you get cold enough of course they're gonna freeze this is not rated as a four season RV this is an extended three season RV it's insulated really well and I want to talk about the walls but we're gonna be putting out the slides whenever I talk about the walls because this is a vacuum bonded laminate that is insulated very well and it is a six-sided aluminum box basically the way this thing is made this wall is made out of aluminum the roof is aluminum the floor is aluminum the front the back it's got foam block in it it's all glued and it's vacuum bonded together it's very strong again we'll talk about that when the slides come out now this is uh, your water pump access door kind of nice um, this thing here we've got disconnected because we wanted to see in here of course it's new there's a lot of experimenting uh, you have a, a factory water filter that's installed they give you the wrench and then this is how you can get to your water pump and then this is all your hoses for everything here's your bypass if you need to shut that off here is your debris filter for the water pump and if you come back out to here you can see this is your fresh water gravity fill this is your city water connection and then this is your antifreeze inlet so you can uh, winterize your unit just from this point here makes it a lot easier of course an outdoor shower we've got these doors open for you so you can see actually that one I push close <laughs> um, kind of nice this is a smaller handle than what I was accustomed to it makes it easier to put away and it's got nice accents I kind of like that it's a dark color and I learned that from our other RV during uh, last November we had a hard freeze before I had a chance to winterize it and uh, with this being black if the south sun is shining on it, it has a tendency to keep it real nice and warm in there from freezing up cable satellite hookup so if you're at a campground uh, cable or satellite you go ahead and just connect that up and it will feed the entire RV with signal uh, here's another slam door uh, slam latch door and uh, magnetic latches to hold it open 
and this is uh, access to the inside under one of the dinette this isn't a dinette model but this is uh, access for uh, storage under the uh, dinette and you could get to it from that door inside we'll show you that a little bit later these are uh, Castle Rock ST radials it's called a radial ST 226 now I hadn't heard about these this is a D rated tire it's 8 ply and a uh, ST 225-75R15 these are made in China so it scared me to death as soon as I heard that they come made in China um, I started looking for uh, you know the typical form thing that you see online and that is my tires are exploding these things are bombs uh, I think one RV youtuber uh, said they were called China bombs not this brand but some of them are known as China bombs uh, these are not known these have been put on these RVs for quite a few years now and talking with the uh, dealer after the fact after we purchased it he said yeah he says I don't have any warranty works over all these years I don't really have any problems with these tires and wheels and uh, if you get on the forums and look these things up you're gonna see the same thing you're not gonna see any complaints for the most part on these you might find one or two but yeah I'm, I'm happy with them of course it's got custom wheels and even more importantly than that what the wheels are attached to are Dexter torsion axles these things ride like a dream because they're four-wheel independent suspension if I was to jack up underneath or put a block underneath of this tire guess what this tire raises and doesn't affect this tire or the other two on the other side so when you're going down the street and you hit a bump each tire will handle that bump without affecting any of the other ones drum brakes that are inside those are self-adjusting drums they're forward self-adjusting and not only that underneath these caps you have basically a bearing buddy one point connection to where you can grease the bearings and uh, then put the caps back on you don't have to take the wheel and tire off and repack your bearings I know on newer RVs that's pretty standard but you got to remember we're coming from a 1992 that every year I've got to pull the wheels and tires and, and drums and everything and repack the bearings so it'd be nice that I can go ahead and get that taken care of one of the other things you may notice on this RV are the frameless windows we love them they're heavily tinted they do a really good job keeping prying eyes out and not only that but we opted for thermopane now I want to tell you about thermopane windows they're not double pane glass to where there's an inert gas in between them this isn't a house it is an RV and the RV manufacturers call these thermopane windows but basically all they are are thicker windows they're thicker from the factory they help a little bit with the R value but nothing crazy but they give a really nice look to the outside also as far as an option we optioned in the over the slide awnings this is the little awning and of course this is the bigger awning uh, that was an option that I thought everybody should have really on anything to do with slides because it protects what's falling on top of the slide it's going to keep that slide a little bit cleaner a little bit drier and of course a little bit less water whenever you're wheeling it in uh, even during a rainstorm so that was a no-brainer this is prepped for 50 amp service regardless of what you have on your roof as far as rooftop airs this comes with a 13,500 BTU air conditioner you will still get 50 amp service and of course you're going to get this big giant cord that goes with it this is a three prong twist lock on this side and then on the uh, side that you plug in to your uh, campground or your receptacle or extension cord it's going to be a t traditional 50 amp four plug but as far as you guys that want to buy the adapter ahead of time maybe to run a small extension cord or something like that just to power it up in your yard like we're doing uh, yeah it's a three prong twist lock with a ground on the side just like any other RV deal is of course you have the bumper and uh, your stinky slinky goes inside here this is a four inch by four inch bumper and I wanted to show you that even though ours is bent a little bit here I'll have to straighten that out you can fit your Rhino Flex hose in there I know some of the RVs you, you can't do that uh, this one you can and of course you get vented end caps for both side um, that's a good idea as far as rust is concerned because our old uh, one has definitely seen rust over the years I wanted to point out that it does have LED lights all the way around 
inside outside everything's LED uh, these are relatively bright um, I've seen brighter but it's not bad of course you get this hard cover and the spare tire holder that mounts to the four inch by four inch bumper it's just the regular rim however it is another castle rock uh, tire just like the uh, ones that are on the RV already and this was something that comes direct from Rockwood as part of their standard package you can see up here this thing was prepped for a Furion backup camera or rear observation camera well guess what we went ahead and optioned that camera in it works real well and it's very easy to install anytime your lights are on you're running lights um, to where these things are all lit up that camera's on so let's go ahead and take a peek at the roof I'm going to point out some things that I really like about that of course there's a ladder on the back and I'm not a small guy I'm over 250 pounds and uh, this thing supports me I'm going to go ahead and climb up there and see if I fall that might be a good video huh All right, guys, so the one thing that I like about Rockwood is how much die core they use. Look at how much they slather on. I mean, this stuff is thick all the way around, all the way across. That's a relatively big seam of it, and it's crossed everything. And you can see we've opted in for two rooftop airs. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, we also opted in an extra max air that's in the back here we'll talk about that you can see it has the clips on it those clips will allow you to quickly disconnect it and clean underneath make everything nice and clean appearing for inside when you look up through that fan or the sun's coming down through that cover but I really like uh, how well they glue everything you can see this is another option it's a Wi-Fi Ranger Sky 4 LTE ready you can put your SIM card right inside there and if you do guess what you're going to have yourself um, Wi-Fi and cell data boosting off those two little antennas. So if you've got a hotspot plan, you could just stick your SIM card in there and uh, they give you the instructions on how to take care of that. Again, that's part of the standard package for this RV. You can't buy it without that. Okay, back safely on the ground. <laughs> uh, also, the other option that we have is the uh, electric stabilizing jacks. You have one switch on the rear for both rear pads and you have the same on the front for both front pads and it's pretty simple I mean you can get the idea you know extend retract uh, they do the job just by pushing the button and I really really like that because I'm getting a little bit lazier tell you the truth and I don't necessarily want to crank down all that distance I mean that's quite a bit you can see that they still have a lot of room to travel uh, these things can still travel out this way more yet here we are and it's uh, leveled out and definitely an unlevel parking area this door here we have closed and the reason that we have it closed is because we want to show you what the steps look like in their store position that's another option that is standard on this model year and the 2019 model year and uh, we really like it that was another selling point of course a big full 21 foot awning on this side this is a power awning and it does have LED lights inside of course if you have those LED lights you don't have to have them on when the awnings out but if you want to give a little bit extra light you can no they do not dim no they do not change color I'm sure people want to know that but they don't <laughs> um, and then your standard amber LED light that'll light things up the normal way uh, you know the way everybody's been doing for years except it's LED the awning is a dark color it's black for the first few feet then you have a gray stripe and then you have another darker stripe a little bit further out looks really nice two outdoor speakers they sound relatively well um, they are full weatherproof so no worries there you do have cable access out here you can see and the reason you have cable access as well as power is because they give you a place to hang your out you know your TV outdoor you pull it out of the bedroom you bring it out here and it just hooks up you're all done you can watch TV this is the place that I was talking about that your shelf your food preparation shelf can hang and then of course your grill now if you look at my wife as she steps up here she's only five foot five three. 
Five foot three. Boy, I got that wrong. She's shrinking with age. <laughs> I was never five five. Okay, we'll just pretend. <laughs> so she's five foot three, and you can see, wow, look how tall it is. Okay, we'll be perfectly honest with you. If you have the shelf on here, it is very tall. That shelf is this height. However, the grill that connects underneath here with a quick disconnect is not that high. About, it drops down. Yeah, it's about right here if I remember. Right. You have a frame that connects to this and that frame hold, you know, hangs down basically and then the, the grill slides into it. And it, it it's pretty decent. Now this is gonna be seem really odd because I don't like this probably as much as everybody else don't like it. Uh, this is your black tank flush. I don't know why they put it on this side of the RV. They do that with a lot of RVs, but I don't really care for that. For obvious reasons, when you go to you know, the campground and you're dumping your, your tanks, your black water tank and your gray water tank, it's on the other side. And usually the hose that you could potentially hook up to um, that will allow you to rinse out your tanks, that's also on that side too. So that means I got to carry an extra uh, hose that I just used to flush my black tank. Because even though this should be safe, uh, to just use like your drinking water hose. I'd never do anything drinking water wise when black is concerned. <laughs> so now we're up to the bedroom door back around the coach and I want to go just a little bit further. I want to show you inside here. Uh, this is the uh, double latch so she's going to help me because I only have one hand and of course magnetic and of course you could see automatic light came on everything's illuminated and this is really large so how large is it well let's get some measurements all right so let's go from front to rear now from front to rear the bottom's going to be smaller than the top because there is an angle because the front of the coach is angled but on your floor here uh you have uh let's see 38 inches on the bottom and then up top if you got something relatively tall um it may need some extra headroom up top you're gonna have four foot it's showing four foot there okay and as far as going from uh side to side let's go ahead and run this all the way over to the other side and this in case you got something long maybe you have a ladder or something you want to put in here and i'm at 93 inches so seven foot nine inches for length you can almost make this a bunk but let's go ahead and talk about the opening i'm sure a lot of you want to know that because nothing's going to fit in there necessarily that is uh, big and square so the opening is 33 inches from front to rear or side to side and as far as height we are at 23 and a half inches so there you go a lot of people wanted to know that and i don't find that information anywhere so hopefully that helps you out and of course we're going back to the uh, retractable uh, foot pads on the front again one switch controls this side and the other side on the front same with that one back there one switch controls this side and the other side on the back just the two switches that's all you don't have to run around to all four corners why would we care about these steps because anybody that knows walking in and out of an rv pretty much will shake the rv for everybody that's inside there no matter how stabilized you have it these stop that almost entirely and you don't have to worry about steps that are hanging outside that are necessarily getting rusty or dirty or bouncing around or anything like that these are really sturdy stable steps i mean this makes it to where with this handle that they give you on the front and the back these grab handles makes you really confident going in and out and you know as we get older yeah we all do get older uh, we may get a little bit more uh, clumsy and this will help out I mean this is a very sure step now as far as the way these things work uh, let's go ahead and open the door for you first and the door does have to be all the way open the door has a friction hinge as you can see the winds pretty decent out here and it, it won't move it just doesn't want to move as far as the steps going in let me let my wife demonstrate how easy it is oh my you're straining aren't you do you need help do i need help, help <laughs> yeah these things are spring loaded with a shock uh so you basically have got um help getting these up i mean they lift themselves up 
there's no latches, there's no knobs, there's nothing that you have to, to clip on to keep it from doing anything. You just put them up and that's it. Uh, and of course, once you get to where you need to go, guess what? You just put them down and uh, they lock in place or they set in place. You may have to adjust the individual feet for your terrain and how tall you are, but nothing crazy. Okay, before we started shooting this video, uh, we went ahead and shot a couple clips here. And I want to show you what it looks like and sounds like whenever you bring these things in. Uh, some people don't know what they sound like. Some people are kind of, you know, amused by that. I'm one of them. I like to hear the mechanics of it. So let's go ahead and go to that clip. We're going to show the slides coming in. Okay, so with the slides in, uh, the main thing you're probably asking yourself is who cares what it looks like inside with the slides in? Well, we care. And the reason that we care is we may want to boondock overnight at uh, Walmart or at a truck stop. And in that case, if you get stuck in that situation, especially at a truck stop, uh, you can't have your slides out. Not at a truck stop. Not when you're parked among the truckers. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are saying, well, you're not supposed to park at a truck stop. You're not a truck. You're an RV. Well, listen, Pilot and Fly and Jays, whenever you call up and ask them about RV parking, they say yes. And then you ask them, is there dedicated RV parking? And they say, no, you just park among the trucks. I know that's definitely the case in South Carolina because that's what we did. And because the trucks are so close to your rig, you can't put these slides out. So how am I going to sleep for the night if I have a slide that doesn't allow my bed to work? Or the slide that's in the living area. So let's go talk about the slide in the living area and then we'll come back. The slide in the living area is open currently. So whenever we come in to try to access the kitchen at night, again, we're just staying the night. We want to get something to eat. We want to maybe cook something in the microwave. We want to cook something on the stove. Maybe we have some dishes that we need to, to utilize and then maybe wash later. Um, we come through the bathroom and the door opens. It doesn't open a large way, but again, I'm 250 pounds and I can squeeze through here. And guess what? I have access to the dining table. I can move around freely. There's no problems here whatsoever. And I can get to the refrigerator. I can get whatever food out I want. Uh, we'll talk about all these appliances. But, yeah, I, you can see I have access to everything. Now, I don't necessarily need access back there. I'm not sure why I would need access back there unless I left something back there. However, I could put my foot here and just step over. You know, foot here, foot there. I'm on the ground over there. So this is what you call a slide-in accessible RV. This is a desirable feature for people that want to travel and stop, maybe for the night or maybe just for a few hours, get some sleep, get some food, and they don't want to basically set up camp because that's basically what you would be doing when you put these slides out. So let's go ahead and do just that. We're going to put the slides out for you and show you what that looks like, and uh, then we'll talk about all the features inside the RV. Okay, so that noise you just heard, that brrr noise, that's normal. That's what it sounds like when you're putting it in and when you're putting it out. That's an overload clutch uh, that protects the motor and lets you know it's time to stop pushing the switch. So let's go back into the bedroom and talk about all the features in there. All right, so this is an RV Queen. Uh, I'm six foot tall and I don't really have a problem with this. If I put my head a little bit closer to the wall, 
my feet are at the end of the bed. Now, they do make, if you want a little bit bigger and you don't want to spend extra money, you can buy an insert that goes between the wall and the top of your bed, and you just slide your cushion down, and it adds about six inches. Uh, we don't know if we need that necessarily. We do want to try out this mattress. This is the mattress that comes with the RV. This is a Serta mattress. Um, it's a relatively firm mattress from the factory, what you get. However, uh, we want to try it out. We think that it might be something that's pretty decent. Uh, but we've got to give it a try first. You can see that we have a, a big window. It's basically like an automotive style window that's on the front of the RV. And you get a uh, heavy tent on it, so it's hard for them to see in. And of course, like right now, we have the nightshades down. And I'm going to tell you, what, even though it might be pitch black outside and you have all these lights on in here, you can barely see, but maybe a little bit of a glow of a light. You can't even really tell what's going on. You just know the lights are on. And it don't really light up those that much. Uh, really, really nice. We really like that. Same with this window here. Now, of course, that one don't open. That one does open. They're real simple cranks, just a couple of cranks, and they do tilt out, and they only open a little bit. And you're probably thinking, man, I'm not going to get much of a breeze from there. We'll talk about that in a little bit with some of these other options. Up above, you have four cabinets for storage. There's a storage drawer here. That drawer is relatively deep, considering uh, I'm sure there's probably a little bit more room that's left back there that could be accessed, but that's plenty for right now. And then on this side here, because you've got a slide that's going in and out, in and out, you can't really have a drawer, but they did give you a little drop table and storage underneath there. You have two outlets here, two outlets there, talking about you know regular old 115 outlets. There's two USBs and a 12 volt power port there. Of course, you have two lights up above the bed. Don't be, don't look at those when you turn them on because it'll blind you. And then you have lights inside up top, which is uh, powered off of this switch. You can see here, plenty of lighting for what's going on in here. This is one of our most favorite features. This is one of the things that sold us on this RV. We're always trying to find wardrobe. You can see you have hanging wardrobe storage in here. Looks like there's plenty to me. I can't imagine us having any more clothes than this can accommodate. And then of course on this side, guess what? More shelves for more clothes. And I mean, they, they're pretty decent shelves. So let's go ahead and tell you how big the shelves are. All right, so these things are 16 and 3 quarter deep. And as far as tall, there is a lip that's involved. But once you're uh, over that lip, you're 14 and a half inches. And then as far as width, let's go ahead and do this. And inside, 27 inches. Let me make sure that they're the same height. Uh, the second shelf is uh, just over 13 and a quarter inches tall. And then the bottom shelf, which is looks like the deepest shelf to me, and it is by far, it is 15 inches deep. So cool. quite a bit of room in those. And you got positive latches that hold them in place. We opted in for a, a TV. Uh, from again Rockwood. This is a 24-inch uh, TV. It is an, uh, it's not an LED TV and this doesn't tilt. Now initially uh, when my wife heard that she's like oh that's sad because she's going to be most likely sleeping on that side of the bed. However you can watch TV just fine. With your head at the top of this uh, pillow here on that side of the bed um, I laid there and their viewing angle is fine. You do not have to tilt this at all. Of course, it don't tilt or swivel because when you're putting the slide in, if you accidentally forget, guess what? Boom, that's an issue. <laughs> of course, here's your uh, satellite cable hookup, and then you've got two outlets, and then the on-off switch, we already talked about that. This here, we had to ask, what is that? This is a sensor for the heat. It lets you know uh, what's going on back here and if they need to be turning off. And the reason is because there is a single thermostat that controls both zones. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now going back to the bed, you've seen that outdoor storage and you can see how much it takes up inside here. Um, underneath the bed, there's still some storage left. Believe it or not, they still made room for some storage. This is what the RV is made of. These are the aluminum frame that I'm talking about. This is something else that we really like about this RV is that it has aluminum frames where a lot of the RV manufacturers will put wood. I mean, come on, this is a, a dresser and in the, the other room, is the dinette and the dinette guess what it's made with aluminum just like the rest of the rv where some of the manufacturers or most of the manufacturers they make it with wood so i really like that so good storage underneath here and guess what more drawers underneath the bed um not a bad 
a storage system for a bedroom. This is one of the features that really sold us on the RV was that you had all the storage, the storage up above, the storage underneath, that drawer, and then of course shelves to put all your junk, whatever it may be. We don't have CPAP machines, but one day maybe in the future. While we're sitting here, we're gonna talk about the air conditioner that's inside. Uh, this is an optioned in second air conditioner. You don't have to have this air if you're camping, you know, in 70 degree temperatures mainly. Uh, the reason is is you could put yourself a max air. You can option in a max air vent just like the one that comes standard in the bathroom and you can have a fan in here that when you turn on and open that window it'll draw all the air that you need and if you need more air to come in just open this door and use the screen. You can just crack the door. It's not going to fly open because it has that friction hinge and uh, the screen door of course will keep the bugs out uh, but we opted in for a second rooftop air uh, because the coach was a little bit bigger and we like to we like to camp in hot weather uh, however we like to sleep in cool rooms whenever you get into your rv just like all the rest uh, with these modern options um, if you want it to cool off fast you just open these little doors same with that one on that side it's just like this one there's filters in here and this is a 15,000 btu coleman mock and that is a, a pretty darn big unit uh to be cooling this rv off the cool thing is and i'm sorry about the pun is that if you decide that you want to run just this air conditioner because the other one isn't doing it you can do that you can run just this air conditioner and you can open these vents and of course it will cool the bedroom as long as these are closed it will also cool the rest of the rv it will help with the air all through this RV, even, you know, in the living area. If you want to do better than that, maybe it's not real hot out, you don't need to run this unit. You've got the other air conditioner that's in there. We'll talk about that in a bit. So the nice thing is, is you've got options, basically. You may run into a situation, and maybe it's a little bit warm in the bedroom because sun's coming through the tinted window, just like it is now. Uh, if you don't want to put Reflectix up in the window to help you out with that, uh, just run the rooftop air and you can have it blow directly on you. Or if you're sitting in the other room and you need a little bit more than the 13,500 BTU air conditioner that's in there, you can run this one and it will help out. It will blow through all these vents, including the ones that are in the living area. Now, if you don't want to hear this air conditioner at night and you want to sleep and this is a little bit too noisy for you, some people think it's too noisy, you can run the air conditioner that's in the living room and again, it will come through all this duct work in here. It's just a lot of options. Now, if you are in a very hot climate, you do have 50 amp service available, you can go ahead and fire up both rooftop airs and it's just going to be blowing cold air all through this coach. So I'm going to talk about that just a little bit more when we see the uh, control board, but I wanted to talk about the air conditioner while we're looking at it now. So with all that said, let's go into the bathroom. However, first let's talk about being out of the bathroom. If you're in the bathroom, you close this door. Very nice. I mean, it, it's a, it does a good job as far as um, dividing off, and I can immediately hear less noise coming from this area and of course it offers privacy at night when we want to use the bathroom that was one of the other options that we talked about on wanting a feature for the RV and that was when I get up in the middle of the night I want to be able to climb out of my bed I want to be able to walk through a dirt free zone I want to go into the bathroom utilize the bathroom and I want to walk back to the bed in my bare feet and not have to worry about walking through dirt now, if we are utilizing this door a lot in and out, of course, we're going to have dirt that might be in this area. However, we're going to be utilizing that door the majority of the time. So now that we're talking about doors, guess what? Rockwood puts the same size door on the front and the back. These are wide doors. Most RVs with double doors, you have a little skinny door and you have a big fat door. Well, guess what? This unit has two big fat doors, so you have access just as easily in the front or the back, and that comes into play whenever we're out camping. Kind of going back to something that was outside, and that was the double doors. We didn't really talk about that. That was a feature that we really liked. A lot of people say, I don't really want double doors. It's double the problems, double the trouble, double the seal, double the leaks, whatever, double the security. Well, I kind of like having double doors for a reason, and I've not double door. I'm not talking about double door, I'm not talking about Harry Potter. I'm talking about double doors. I'm just talking fast. The reason that I like double doors <laughs> and double door 
is because whenever we're out camping, you may be in a situation like we are right here in our driveway. And guess what? Back by that door currently, the grassy area in which the RV is parked over is kind of muddy. We've gotten a lot of rain. It's kind of muddy back there. Well, I don't want to go in and out of that door. I don't have to because I have this door. Or if we go to a campground and we back the RV in and everybody is going in and out of their normally doored RV, single doors, there may be an area that's all wore out. Well, you don't have to necessarily use that door. You can utilize the other door. There's other features. Yeah, sure, tons of other features. Let's talk about those. We notice that whenever we're going in and out of our old RV, which is also a double door RV, that if we have the lights on outside, especially that yellow light, even though it's supposed to be a bug light, bugs have a tendency to congregate around that light. If we're going in and out of the door that that light is on, because we may turn it on to help us find our camper if we're coming back from a shower house or if we're coming back late at night from an event, maybe we're walking the park late at night and when we come back to our camper and that lights on and there's bugs flying all around, we don't have to go through the door that that light is the closest to. We can go through another door that there's no bugs. They're all at the other one. That's another feature. Let's talk about yet another feature of a double door. Whenever we're loading up for a camping trip, I have the ability to just open the door and throw stuff in whichever side it needs to go. I don't have to walk through the whole RV to put my clothes in the bedroom. I have a door that's accessed right to the bedroom. So let's talk about yet another feature for a double door. If there's a fire, you can climb out a lot of these windows. They're fire escapes. Or if you don't want to climb out of this tall RV and fall on the ground and probably break your neck or arm, even though you didn't get burned up, uh, now you have doors to choose from. If the fire's in the back, let's go out the front. Vice versa, if it's in the front. We wanted that as an option. We've got a third option. Yes, there's been times that we've had a trash can that's outside or a cooler that was outside, and we've heard animals screwing around with our food. Well, I can open the door that's not close to that cooler and kind of startle the animal, or at least see what's going on out there. And you don't necessarily have to go out the door that maybe all the noise is happening. Now, I know that's kind of a poor excuse. That's not the best reason, but we did use that in the past. We've startled some animals that have been trying to get into something outside. Now, this is a good feature. This is a good reason to have double doors as far as I'm concerned. When we're out camping and there's a light rain going on, everybody knows that you're supposed to bring in your awning if there's heavy rain. But there's a lot of times it's not very heavy. How many times have you seen people sitting underneath their awning while it's raining and they've got it tilted and they got it at an angle and all the water's running off just fine. It's not a downpour. It's not, you know, a, a deluge. It's just a little bit of rain. Well, at this point, I have a door that I can still get out. So let's say the wind's coming from the front of the coach and it's really windy in that direction and it's rainy. Now I'm not talking about wind that's going to rip off the awning, but I'm talking about wind that's moving the awning a little bit. Of course I can push the button and just roll in the awning. Or even on our old RV, I could go ahead and put the awning away. But a lot of times it's not that windy and it's not that rainy, but I do want to protect it from a random gust that may happen. And if I tilt it, to where it's at an angle, let's say for the front, this being the front of the RV, what will happen is the wind will come across the top of that awning and if anything, push it down instead of try to lift it up. And it will go out the back of the awning that's up high. Let's say the wind's running from the back. Well, I get to do the opposite. I can tilt it down on the back side to where the wind's pushing it down. And of course, it's high on this side. So the rain is running off and the wind is pushing it down so it's not getting underneath of it as much as it would if you had it the wrong way. So why would a double door make a difference with that? Well, if you guys haven't figured it out yet, guess what? When you have your awning down, whatever side you got it down on, you can't get out that side. So at that point, I can use the other door. So if I have the awning down on the front because I have the wind coming from the front and I want the rain to run off, I just use the back door and vice versa if the wind's blowing the other way. That's a good reason. We've used that multiple times. We love that. So now that you're inside here and we have the double doors, we don't have to worry about dirt being traipsed to the bathroom that might be in the back. 
and we have to go through all that dirt just to go to the bathroom. Here is our bathroom. Inside here is a Dometic foot flush. This is a much better foot flush than what we had in our old RV. Matter of fact, I forgot where the flush valve was. I thought it was on our old RV. But it's a nice spray pattern. Looks really good. I really like this one. Nice smooth action whenever you push it down. I mean, it just opens so smooth. It's definitely better than our old one. It is a plastic toilet. Plastic top, all that. Plastic bowl, but very well built. Whenever you were looking at this, how many of you guys were thinking, well, I could store some of my towels in there, I guess, for the bathroom. You don't have to. Look at that. This is not a slide. This is built in. And this is plenty. I don't know how many of you roll towels, but that's what we would most likely do. We fold them normally, but if we roll them, we could put in quite a bit. That's a lot of storage. So how much storage is in there? All right, so front to rear to the lip, we're talking about nine and a half inches. So you have three shelves here with nine and a half inches deep. Let's see how tall the, the shortest one is first. At least it looks short, you know, to, to my eye. Um, we're talking right about 15 inches. And then this one here, we're talking right about almost 16 inches. We'll call it 15 and three quarter. And then the big one, this is the top one, obviously. And that one, we are at 20 inches to the opening. But if you go inside here, there's another inch and a half inside. Now let's go ahead and talk about side to side. I'm just going to do one measurement because they're all the same. All right, so this one here, you're going to have to take our word for it because I can't really uh, show you this one. But this is... As my poor eyes are trying to adjust, uh, we're at 31 inches. So you got them. 31 inches is the uh, width on all of these. That's a lot of room. I mean, as you know, storage is a premium whenever you come to RVs, and that's a lot of room. All right, so here we have uh, the Max Air fan that comes standard on the RV. This comes with all the Rockwood uh, 2604 WSs. Uh, this is not an option. It comes in the standard package. Uh, for the Max Air fan, if you've never used it before, you got to pull this down, the manual one, and uh, you go ahead and just crank this. It opens the vent inside uh, to where you can vent to the outside. And it is just a push fan. You know what I'm saying? It, it just pushes the air out. So we'll go ahead and open this up just for demonstration purposes. You can see you get some light that's coming through, even though those covers up there are dark. You know, we talked about how you can clean all that and I can see up in there that's why one of the reasons you want to maybe clean those occasionally so you get a, a good shine inside there and then as far as the fan whenever you turn it on simple fan on button and then underneath it says one two three four of course that's the speeds well guess what this thing will start on the last speed that you hit the off button which is really cool so if you uh, have it on two which I believe I have it on two guess what it starts on two so I really like that feature because you may not want it on four you may not need that but you may like that one speed and you want to use it over and over again you just go ahead and turn it on just hit on once and it'll be right back to that speed this is an exhaust only fan nothing wrong with that I'm sure you could rewire it if you wanted to pull in air but I'm not a big fan of that if I want to pull in air I want to pull in air from an area in which I'm going to utilize it to keep me cool and that would be one of the windows. So that is a uh, nice feature that comes standard. And of course, to close it, you just go ahead and do the reverse. I know that some of this is uh, elementary for you guys, but you crank this thing down, make sure you get a little bit of a twist on it, and then up to lock it. Let's turn around. How could I be talking about an area so long? Yeah. Now we're in the bathroom. We love the bathroom. The shower is very sturdy. It's relatively tall for me. And uh, of course, you got double glass doors that uh, will allow easy access. You don't have anything swinging out into your floor. And not only that, when you get in and out of the old swing style doors, once you open the door, all the water would run off on the floor. This keeps the water inside. Now, I didn't know this until we got this one. There's an access panel to let you get to the drain right up front. So that was nice, a nice surprise. I love nice surprises. And then inside here, here is a uh, hanging pouch. Uh, it does have clips so you can remove it if you need to. Um, Heidi decided she would like to keep this hanging pouch in here. It looks nice, it'll do the job, and it's really sturdy. Uh, as far as the wall in here, it's some sort of a texture. Uh, of course, this part down here, is, it looks like wainscoting. And I mean, it's nice. Typical shower head, a skylight that you don't 
you know, six foot tall. Let me go ahead and get in here with my hat on and show you what it looks like. Two things I always loved about these RVs whenever I went out and looked at them. I always complained on the other RVs how the floor felt so flimsy underneath my feet when I stood in it. This one don't. This one has a lot of support underneath. Okay, let's get back to this. I have a hat on and you can see I'm not, I'm, I can, I still can't touch anything. So six foot tall, we're good here. Of course you got a duck underneath this. And I've got enough room. I can move around. How I got my jacket, I got two jackets on because it was cool outside. And I can move around here. I'm not, you know, not hitting anything. So it's a it's a good shower size. So what shower size is it? Well, we got a tape measure. Let's go ahead and find out. From the front to the rear. Now you can't really use all of the rear because of this here, but we'll tr we'll try to go ahead and measure the pan. Uh, 31 inches from uh, the corner of that pan to the corner here, and then on this side, let's go corner to corner. This side going corner to corner, we are at 42 inches from corner to corner on that pan. So that's a pretty good sized pan. Again, because of the, uh, I don't know, what's that look like to you, a Roman column? Uh, that's yeah. going to be uh, something that's going to take away a little bit. Okay, back to the shower. I'm going to have Heidi hold the camera for me. We're not going to run this, but I'll give you the options and show you what it is. This is a shower miser. Now, if you don't know what a shower miser is, neither did I. Uh, I had to see it online and now I understand and it's a great idea. Usually what happens whenever people take showers, uh, they do in the past, what they've done in the past I should say, is they keep a, a water jug, you know, something like a pitcher, uh, a plastic pitcher, a Tupperware pitcher, maybe a, a two gallon thing, maybe not even that, in the shower or maybe outside the shower. And whenever they turn on their shower and they're allowing the water to run so the shower gets warm and then once it gets warm they start taking their shower. The water that's coming out that's not you know adequate to take a shower because it's too cold or it's too hot one or the other they put it in that pitcher and what they do is they use that pitcher then to flush their toilet with that water great idea and it's a way to conserve water however this is an easier way to do that i mean you got to figure the only reason you're running water and wasting water is you want it to be at temperature why when you turn on that and you're starting to get wet that's what this does so what happens is you go ahead and turn the shower miser on. You can see this blue tube here. And when you turn it on and act, you know, make it to where it's active, you can turn on your cold water, turn on your hot water, and you can wait for your hot water to be at this valve ready to be coming through the shower head and on your body. Once it gets hot, you flip the shower miser, and of course, you've got good warm hot water because you have both of them basically uh, set at that point and you know that you can take a shower and not get burned or it's not too cold well how do you know that and what happens to the water that's not coming out of the shower head when you have that on well you can only do this when you're not hooked up to city water this is something when you're trying to conserve the water that's coming out of your fresh water tank you don't want to be hooked up to city water doing that because it will probably overfill your fresh water tank because this diverts water back into the freshwater tank. It does not divert that water that's in that thing running across the floor back into the freshwater tank. It's just diverting the water that's coming from the freshwater tank back to the freshwater tank until, and it's just cold water mainly, until that water becomes warm. Now how do you know it's warm? You can't put your hand underneath the shower head to feel because there's nothing coming out of there. That's where this pipe comes into play. See how it's blue? Blue means cold. Now, red means hot normally, but colorblind people have a hard time seeing sometimes red and blue when it becomes purple, that kind of a thing. So they made this for colorblind people like me, I'm very colorblind, to be able to see when it's hot. How do they do that? This thing changes to a white color. Now at first it becomes sort of like a pinstripe, like a zebra stripe. It's striped. That will tell you the warm water starting to arrive. And then when it turns all white, that means it's hot. But at that point, whenever you start to see it uh, turn pinstripe, you usually can go ahead and turn on your shower miser to where it allows the water to come out of the head. And when it does, guess what? 
you're getting warm water. What a great design, what a great idea, and guess what? It comes standard on this RV. Not only that, but there's another feature that I love, and it's something that I've never had before. When I need to fill my freshwater tank, how do you think I do it? I take my garden hose, or I take the hose at the campground, I take it at whatever potable system that I can get to, and put it in that gravity fill that we looked at outside. I have a special hose that hooks to the end, of the regular fill hose that I can turn on and off and I can fill it and it does a good job but I'm standing out there and I'm waiting and I'm waiting well I don't have to wait I don't have to do that all I have to do is hook up a city water hookup to the outside of the RV turn on the shower miser and then turn on the cold water and it will fill my freshwater tank for me that's why I'm saying if you're hooked up to city water you don't want to be using the shower miser because all it's doing is filling the freshwater tank as you have that activated so another great feature I don't have to go outside and refill my freshwater tank uh, necessarily whenever we're getting ready to leave and go on a trip uh, or leave the campground we always like to go and travel with a little bit of water in our freshwater tank in case we stop on the side of the road we need to wash our hands maybe we even take a shower if we're gonna stop somewhere for the night like Walmart like a truck stop like Cracker Barrel something like that well I can do that fill without taking my hose and disconnecting from the campground and then at that point having the gravity fill and put it in my freshwater tank. It does it from here. And again, standard option. What a great, great idea. Okay, man, is this video getting long, but I'm trying to cover everything. I'm very thorough about this stuff. I hope nobody gets upset about it. So now we're into this little drawer here. Uh, kind of nice. You can throw a few little things in there. Sponge drawer, whatever you want to call it. And then you got a little bit of storage down here, and uh, don't be afraid of this uh, little deal here. This is for the shower. It just pops in and out. I took it out because I didn't want it in there. Uh, very little storage here. Um, I could probably make some sort of a uh, shelf extenders or something like that to where we could get a little bit more room going on in here, maybe a, a second shelf. I don't know. Maybe we don't need it. We have all that storage that was behind us. That could be just for chemicals. A little bit of counter space, not a lot, decent sized sink, a little bit bigger than I like. I'd like it a little bit smaller. I don't know if people have problems with that. It's banded, hot, cold, lets you know what's what. I love this shelf. I would like to see a lip on this shelf all the way around. I might try to find some sort of automotive trim that can handle a little bit and make a shelf on it. That way, in case we put something up here and we're being, you know, moving around, uh, it may not slide off. Uh, that would be nice, but still the toothbrushes and uh i don't know is that a dixie cup it looks awful big for a dixie cup holder but it could be we haven't seen one of those in years uh here's your hand towel towel rack and then of course your medicine cabinet not huge not small pretty decent i'm okay with it and then we have uh this is something from dometic that comes with the uh, commode your uh, drop-in bowl cleaner uh, we'll take that out of there and clean all that because most likely we won't use it. Now up top here, you don't necessarily want to put anything because there is no lip. Um, so whatever you put up there may fall off unless you actually uh, adhere it. But it does give you an area that if you want to try to put something up here, maybe for additional storage. Again, we're, we don't have a lot of stuff, but we do have stuff and we do like to find unique areas for it. You do have enough room over here that even though this door swings open, if you wanted to put another hand towel on this side, I don't see why not you could do it or if you wanted to hang some sort of a shower caddy on this side we'll most likely do that you could actually hang a shower caddy on the outside uh, and then at that point put your soaps and your shampoos uh, that way because this door you can see it slides open you can't do it on that side but you could easily reach out here and bring the shampoo in with you set it down and then put it back here of course you'll have you know potentially water dropping so you got to be careful about that so I think that's going to take care of the bathroom. I can't think of anything else in the bathroom. Oh, all except uh, a couple of things you're going to see that's missing that they give you. Uh, most of the RV manufacturers do not mount the toilet roll holder and a towel bar. They do give you the toilet roll holder and the towel bar, but they don't mount it. And actually, we kind of like it that way because... We don't know if we want toilet paper hanging off the wall in here. Uh, it might get in the way somehow. And the same with the towel. We don't know um, necessarily if we want a towel bar up here. Because in the past, what we've had is big, huge towel hooks. 
real big long towel hooks like in our old RV and the towels will stay on there and dry very effectively as we go down the road. They don't come off. On a towel bar, it might want to work off. As far as the toilet paper roll, we might have some sort of a stand for it, or I might went ahead and drill it. I don't know. We, we're just not sure. It's, it's nice, though, they give us that option. They didn't just drill into our wall and put that on there for us not to like it. Finally, in the kitchen and the living area, Heidi's bored. She's tired of hearing all this. Let's go ahead and get these chairs back where they belong. Of course, these chairs, there's a strap that stores them in the location that they are. This is transport mode. Uh, they need to be out of the way for the slide to come in. But these are the rockers that come with the RV. We're going to put them back where they belong. Um, they're not very heavy. And we were told that it would probably be a good idea to maybe put a, a round piece of carpet underneath of the feet or those felt pads, and you can slide them around. I don't know. Uh, they're not that bad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move them, though. This is all I do whenever we go to move them. Just pick them up, kind of slide it over, drop it down. And this one's pretty much in place already. And you get a lot of room over here. The other thing I wanted to show you is the steps and that's what it looks like when they're in the stored position inside the RV. Again, you can see they're stable. They're fine. That, that's, that's not bad at all. You don't have to put a hook, a bungee cord, or nothing on it. And again, I wanted you to see what it looked like. A lot of people don't get to see these things when they're stored. Now, when they're up in the bedroom, you know, there's a little bit of a problem with the walk around the bed, but you can still get on the bed. It just barely makes it to where you can't walk around it. I just let you know so you guys are concerned about that let's go back to the dual climate control remember earlier I was talking about all the being able to air condition the back or the front or both the front and the back the one in the back also has what they call a chill chaser heat strip it's a very low power low heat strip and it does just what its name says it will knock the chill off it is not a heater. It is not a substitute for a furnace. It does not burn you out. All it does is take the chill out of the air. All that's controlled from here. Your zones, your modes, your fan speeds, your temperatures. You can make the heat chaser, chill chaser run back there and you could have the air conditioning full blast in here. And I don't know why somebody would do that, but it could happen. The door going to the bathroom, pretty simple. So people know that maybe aren't familiar with RVs, big gaps under the door, big gaps above the door, that's designed that way. That's all for air circulation. That's for keeping the bathroom from turning too humid. That makes everything circulate the way that it should. Could you put a bigger door on there? Sure. Could you put a flap up there? Sure, you could do all that. People sometimes have problems with that. I don't have a problem with that. I like that. Okay, so we turn around to the entertainment. It needs clean. It's kind of been messed up a little bit here. You got a Furion soundbar, and you have an Exignia TV. It is a 32-inch uh, TV. It is a HD TV. However, it's only 1080 if it's interlaced, um, which is still good quality. And you know what? I don't think I mind because we don't watch that much TV when we're camping. I mean, we really don't. Heidi definitely don't. Heidi uses it to put herself to sleep. <laughs> and as far as up here, IRV Technologies, this is really nice. We fooled around with this. You have zones that you can put the sound out. Of course, you can play it on this zone one. That's this here. If you want to play it on zone two, it's the speakers in the bedroom. If you want it zone three, that's outside. You can choose any or all those zones at the same time. You can play your CDs through here. Who's got CDs anymore? You can play your DVDs. You can Bluetooth. I've already hooked it up to Pandora. You can play your music off your phone. Really nice. Got near field communications, so everything can communicate relatively quick. Uh, that's something that's a phone option. You got to turn it on your phone. Of course, your volume and everything. Who's up here doing that? Yeah, that's right. You got a remote. The remote controls everything. Of course, you got a remote for the TV. These are glow in the dark buttons. These white ones, that's kind of nice at night. The remote for the front works for the TV in the bedroom also. And this one does come out and tilt so you can put it in an angle that everybody can see. I don't have a problem with what it is right there and the one thing that you got to be concerned with when you're putting your slide back in make sure your TV is back out of the way as far as storage over here there isn't any but you see this big door everybody whoo yeah this is kind of like a, dr a drop-down desktop or something that's all that is 
you can put something in there but um, a laptop you could flap a laptop on here if you wanted to I don't see that being utilized very much uh, especially when this is in the way but that is storage I, you know you could probably store a laptop in there up on end uh, I don't know if I do that without putting some sort of padding down I don't want my laptop bouncing on edge in there and then these doors down here this is access to uh, the uh, water pump um, that is basically you know storage available but it's being utilized but this is storage that's actually able to be used we're going to the dinette the dinette can be a sleeper you just drop the table down the cushions become the bed everybody's seen that on this side this is the door that I was pointing out from the outside of the RV this is the access to that same common storage now on this side here is a little bit strange um, there is storage that's available underneath the bench uh, and then on this side you have storage that you can access with the drawer but just the drawer uh, you know it's really small I think I'd rather have one big long drawer that would allow you to access all of the storage however I can see where that could be a concern with it being open um, still really nice seating and one of the reasons we like this model for whatever reason some of them don't fit my butt the right way <laughs> whenever I sit on them I'm not comfortable now this is a freestanding table just like I mentioned you can move it so whenever you're traveling it's probably a good idea to put it down so it's not bumping the window although the day night blind plastics will kind of hold that and you're not getting a lot of vibration here but still there is some you have little traditional windows that are here you know, regular slide open windows but this one is a lift rod window uh, you just pull the rod out and it slides out uh, that one's a crank open window another traditional slide window you see the storage that's up above you've got six cabinets up above let's talk about the storage drawer here let's get a dimension for that and then we'll talk about the dimensions up here so Heidi's gonna hold the camera again so first we're gonna do the drawer down below and this drawer is uh, 13 and a quarter inches by uh, 15 and 3 quarter inches and it is 9 inches deep now again there's more storage available underneath here so let's go ahead and see what the storage is here now the opening of course you can see again we're gonna keep on hounding this aluminum frame this thing is aluminum framed even though it's inside they want to make it real nice and sturdy and last a long time so as far as what you can fit in here width wise uh, you're only getting something in here 15 inches wide and uh, no taller than looks like nine and three quarter inches but if it's just long let's go ahead and go all the way out to the door not bad uh, we've got 43 inches and then as far as width wise it's gonna be a little bit hard for everybody to see including myself and we're looking at 21 inches inside so that's not bad let's go ahead and check the height real quick and the height which goes to the bottom of the bench it's pretty tall let's go ahead and see what that is we are at 16 inches so pretty good decent amount of storage there let's go ahead and talk about the cabinets are up above there's six of them and let's see what kind of storage we have in there it's common storage of course if you open one you can go through to the other one going to go into these cabinets real quick while we're thinking about it this is not some sort of cheap ply this is real wood this is all real wood and it's pocket screwed and glued together it is really sturdy these are real wood doors this is a real wood door this is real wood all this is real wood it's not some cheap stuff so I forgot to bring that out earlier but we were looking at all those cabinets and there's a lot of them and they put real wood on all of them so let's go ahead and check out here we're 11 inches deep and as far as the height we'll go ahead and go to the roof first um, they are nine and a half inches to the roof of course I'm sure yeah eight inches there um, there is a little bit of a lip here so you could probably get back that half of an inch so I'm probably thinking it's nine inches inside and as far as the opening of each door 17 inches so that's a lot of space I mean you've got all of these three together and that that's a pretty decent amount of space there um, I'm pretty happy with that we're gonna be utilizing that of course and I'll talk about that in a little bit uh, you have a light up above the uh, dinette here and you have two lights here and then one light here and uh, of course they're just zone lights 
Same with those cabinets. You're looking at identical cabinets. You're not seeing any difference. So whatever the dimensions are here, just duplicate it. Now we're moving over to the sofa sleeper. And this is a pull-out sofa. It's not extremely big. I can sleep on it, but it probably best if I was by myself. <laughs> I can hang my feet off the back side and I can put my head on the side that opens up here. And honestly, if you wanted to uh, just get this, it's part of the standard package and uh, replace it with something that's bigger, you can come out uh, further because this one, when it folds out, it's, it, it only comes to about right here. You can still walk around it. You can still get around it and use it. That's nice, but I would like something that's a little bit longer, maybe a little bit more comfortable, but I'll tell you what, as far as to sit on this couch or to sit in this dinette, like I said, fitting my butt, they're very comfortable. I can sit, if needed, for hours at that dinette. I can already tell the couch is very comfortable for what it is. This was a selling point for us, and the reason is if we have visitors, we can pull this out, and guess what? They have their own little zone. Uh, considering that this is a standard option, um, you can opt up for theater seating. We didn't want that. We wanted the bed. And this is going to be basically for computer work. I'm going to be doing a lot of computer work over here. So we don't necessarily going to be using that for a bed. Getting to these. I really would like to have recliners in here. We might opt for those. There's nothing wrong with these except I'm not a rocker, swivel type rocker guy. I like to have my feet up. I like to have either something that kicks up and holds my feet or I'd have to have an ottoman in here. And I'm not doing that unless it's a storage ottoman. But the chairs are nice. They're not too heavy. They're not too light. And uh, again, moving them around is not a big deal. Up here, we've got cabinets across the back. Again, it's all real wood. It's all put together very well. So let's get some dimensions on this cabinet. Now you can see there's big spaces in between. That's just, you know, so you could put something in there. Uh, make it a little bit more room. I'll try to give you an idea of what you have available there. It's going to be a little bit tough to measure, but still, I, I love this. I, I love the fact that we've got all these cabinets and they're so sturdy. Here we have the openings and looks like they're the same as the other ones. That's eight inches for the opening. Going to the roof, we're going to have different dimensions. Right here, it's 10 inches. There is a little bit of a lip here. And the reason is, is I go in more and as I get closer to the middle, this is an arched ceiling. You know, I'm going to have, look at that, it's over almost a foot. Uh, with that lip considered, it is a foot. So you can put taller items in the middle. As far as the width, you're going to be a little bit smaller than those are over there. Um, we're at 14 and a half inches. Those over there were 17 inches. And I think uh, in this case we're uh, 15 inches. So they're a little bit wider for these two center ones. Again, it's a common area. I would think, let's go ahead and give you a halfway measurement mark um, as far as how far over we can go halfway and you can double it if you got something that uh, you want to know how much you can store. And I'm almost there, almost to the wall, quite a bit of room. And we are at uh, about 46 and a half inches. And uh, of course you double that for both sides to give you an idea of length. We already talked about height, so let's go ahead and talk about depth. And the depth with the uh, lip is uh, nine inches, so nine inches deep. It's a short area that had to be accommodated somehow, and they did a good job there. I, I'm relatively happy with those cabinets. I do want to point out that there's uh, two outlets over here. There are two outlets over here, and I'm talking about 15 amp outlets, you know, for household. There is a GFI, two outlets here. That way you run in anything up here, coffee pot makers, whatever. This is a storage cabinet. You do have storage up above here, and it's relatively deep. Uh, there is some plumbing that's involved. Let's see if we can get some dimensions there. All right, we're gonna get some light in here for you so you can see what I'm talking about. See how there's plumbing there? Um, it's still allowing you to store stuff. And we are at 21 inches. 21 and 3 eighths and then as far as side to side the openings not very big uh, you're only talking about an 11 inch opening but once inside you've actually got some room uh, before there's a little fake wall that's inside there to keep your stuff from falling off so um, let's go ahead and try to get this tape measure in here and as far as the dimension that's inside you're at 22 inches so you got 22 inches there and then uh, again the height of the opening you are at 
about 14 inches there. So a uh, decent amount of storage. Uh, considering how small the door is, I'm still seeing that being something that will be used with a lot of pots and pans. Now, there is a panel here that we left off, just like the other one. So you can see what it looks like. That's the hot water tank that's outside. And, of course, it's plugged in. You have the ability to heat your water, of course, like most of the newer RVs, with electric or with gas. So... It's nice to see what it looks like and how you can access it from there. Go ahead and take a look finally at the kitchen part of it. Um, this is a uh, pull down sprayer. This is something that Heidi's not a big fan of. Um, I don't care one way or the other, but uh, the sink is, is pretty decent quality. Um, it does have one of these strainer racks and then a cutting board rack here. Uh, this is the pouch that give you with all your paperwork. That's really nice that they do that. Of course you have counter space back here and you gain some counter space with these here if you want to try to utilize that. It's a double sink, not extremely deep. Let's go ahead and get measurements on that. All right, so we're about seven inches deep in the bowl. As far as the width, we're oh, darn near a foot there. It's almost exactly a foot. And then from front to rear, I'm sure we're a little bit bigger than a foot. Yeah, we're 14 inches. And of course that matched on this side. Um, you have the ability for it to be a sprayer or just a regular pour by pushing the button that's on the back side of this. And of course this swivels. And yes, this isn't a fail safe. If you swivel it all the way around and turn it on, guess what? Your floor is going to get wet. Uh, again, uh, not real big. We don't really use the sprayer. Um, really nice countertops. So we have basically what they call a sponge holder there. And then you have these drawers. They're on really nice rollers. They give you a... Uh, a divider here for utensils um, I guess I mean we, we use that stuff um, they're not anything that's these are the uh, legs for the TV but as far as the drawers and uh, them closing they're not like a soft latch or anything and you can see what they look like they extend fully you can get to the back you don't have to go searching for stuff one of the things on the counter that Heidi loves even though the kitchen has very limited counter space and cabinetry um, we'll talk about this cabinet here in a second. She loves this because just on 2018 models, this was a separate piece that you had to store somewhere and come out and hang when you wanted to use it. Where now, you need counter space, you just lift it up. That's it. And to put it down, it's just as easy. So it's really nice that they offer that. You like that, don't you? I do. <laughs> it was a selling point for her. It's a good height. Yeah, it is a good height. That's it. And it, it's, like I said, it stores itself, so you don't have to worry about carrying it or anything. Okay, let's go to the last bit of storage that we're going to talk about in this RV, and that's this cabinet here. Now, this is the one thing that we don't like that they, they lost. is um, It used to be a double door cabinet here, which gave you a little bit more space. It came over just a little bit further, about here. And they also had kind of an L shape. They had a cabinet that came out to here, too. So it was bigger. But this is still pretty plentiful and obviously we're going to utilize this so let's go ahead and talk about this space we have a total of 17 inches deep in height in the front it's going to be a little bit taller we're only at about 16 and three quarters in the back it's going to be shorter again because of that whole curved roof thing and we're looking at um 17 inches in the back and let's go ahead and just Get this last measurement out of the way, finally. Uh, 18 and a half inches. So that's pretty big. That's not bad. We're going to be utilizing it for pots and pans, I'm sure. And we do have collapsible pan pots and pans that we'll be talking about in a future video that are perfect for this. Okay, so one of the reasons you lost some cabinet space, uh, this 19 model and the 2020 that we have, 1.3 cubic feet Magic Chef. How good is Magic Chef? How long have they been making them? Our 1992 Terry Resort that was made by Fleetwood has the original Magic Chef radar range or microwave in there. It's a knob that you turn and all that stuff. Works perfect. Works like a dream. This one here is the same way. Digital has all these fast buttons just like you would expect. And it also has a uh, rotisserie in there. That's really nice. Uh, of course, the old 1992 don't have that. Uh, you have a fan here for an exhaust fan for the stove. Uh, it's not very loud, but it's pretty darn powerful. And as far as the light, you can see. Just a real nice soft light you can leave on. You have your grease capture vent thing there. 
And as far as the blind, of course, it's metal over here, kind of required with all this fire going on. And let's go ahead and turn the light back on, see a little bit more. Here's your knife holder in the back. It's got nice big openings for a few and then the small ones here. Uh, you got some vents here for your oven that come through the glass top. This is something else we like because we need that counter space and here you go this is where it's coming from this is a suburban stove it is electric ignition no freaking little lighter it is a three burner we don't need a three burner we've only ever cooked at the same time on two burner fold back this fold back this now you have sort of a backsplash for your stove uh, although there's a nice decorative backsplash already on there and then of course the burner and the grate and everything else and these pretty you know pretty straightforward as far as what this is how it works there you go you got a burner <laughs> you got a stove that's how it works and then the oven typical oven nice big glass window lets you see what's going on in there this is the food preparation area this is Heidi's area <laughs> this is not mine okay moving from the uh, the oven the stove uh, we're going down here this is the uh, fuse center here you can see all the breakers that are in there of course we have a you know a couple extra breakers because of the air conditioner option that we use there your carbon monoxide detector and then you have a smoke detector that's over there and of course there's a fire extinguisher over there on the wall okay right above that is another option we got the real wood inserts for the uh, front of the refrigerator Heidi didn't want these originally. She said, oh, I don't know. What happens if there's a problem with the refrigerator? Well, these are removable. You just put them on your next one. Same with this one here. Um, but they do look nice. They tie in the decor pretty nice. I'm not a big fan of decor, but now that we've got this RV, I'm, I'm definitely appreciating it more because it looks a lot nicer. This is a Dometic. It is an 8 cubic feet, which is much bigger than the old one we have. And... Uh, I kind of like the Dometics better than the Norcolds. Norcolds had some problems. Uh, we have a Norcold in our old RV. It's only a couple years old, and it's a good one. Uh, we haven't had any issues with it, but I've always liked the uh, Dometic a little bit better. Uh, just a personal preference. And again, you can see how big it is. Nice. And then the controls up here. Of course, this runs on propane or household current, or what you would plug into a campground. Again, going back to the water tank, that's propane or household current, which is really nice. It's just a six-gallon hot water tank. That's all we've ever needed. The furnace is a 30,000 BTU furnace. It does a really good job as far as heating this RV. It gets really hot in here. However, when you're plugged into a campground, you can use this. I plugged in this little thing. This is a Polonis heater. Uh, not that this comes with the RV, but just let you know how well it's insulated in here. It was 44 in here today. I put that on low, the lowest setting, and let it run, and it was 73 degrees in a short amount of time. So um, that's plenty. Um, it did make it to where the bedroom was suffering a little bit as far as heat, but it was still pleasant. Um, and even still now, with the daylight, I don't think the temperature outside has gotten above 54 degrees all day today, yet we're still sitting at 65 degrees inside here. So it works really well. So this is our RV. This is something that we work towards uh, for a lot of our life. Um, you know, when I say that, we made accommodations. Uh, this isn't something that I don't think that you guys should just jump into. I've done a video in the past about buying used and new, and I still believe that, especially if you're a newer RVer, uh, buy used. Um, you've got to be able to repair some stuff. Even with a brand new RV, you're going to have to repair stuff. There's stuff that breaks, especially if you're picky like I am. But this is uh, a very nice unit. Um, I think that Rockwood did a very good job. We took the tour at Rockwood. If you guys want to take the tour, uh, contact Anthony Yoder at Rockwood. Uh, he does a great job. You're going to see a lot of fabrication going uh, on at the plant and you're going to hear a lot of facts that you wouldn't normally hear necessarily from a dealer. Um, it was a very, very informative place uh, to see a unit get built. Uh, I was I was impressed with everything overall. So Rockwood 2604 WS is a 2020. We're really happy that we got moved into it. And we're going to be slowly transferring all of our stuff from our house, whatever we're going to keep into our truck and into this RV and that's not very much we're definitely downsizing but we wanted to give you a first look at this 
And, um, oh yeah, I wanted to show you one more thing that sold us on this RV. Remember what I said about uh, this thing being an aluminum cage? Well, also it has laminate bonding. The outside walls are laminated to that aluminum substructure that I talked about. There's foam block in there, and there's very few RVs that have a roof like this one or a wall like this one. And I'm talking even about the walls on the outside of the slide. Uh, whenever they make this laminate construction uh, that's inside, you'll see a lot of these uh, newer RVs just have a, I don't know what you want to call it, it's not even a coroplast, it's some kind of a uh, vinyl sheeting that's just covering, you know, the structure kind of loosely and i wanted to talk about this as i did when we went to the factory tour of how nice it is the way they build these i mean this slide i i mean that is solid i I've, i'm hitting that with pretty good force and uh same with the underside it's it's all solid same with the roof on the slide i mean it's same with this little slide I mean, it's just solid. It's like a rock. Not only just the inside and the main structure, but I'm talking about the slide. There's not very many roofs. I'm not hitting that light. I have relatively big, fumbly hands, and... Come on now. Seriously. That is some serious roof there. I can take this wall here and I can hammer on it just as hard as I did that roof. And it's all built strong. This thing is a strong laminate box. I love that. That was a feature that really made this thing drive a point home with us. And it was built well. The old RV is going to be going out and uh, this is the new RV. I hope you enjoyed this tour. It's very long. It's very informative. If you guys didn't like how long it was, please learn how to use Fast Forward. Yes. It's easy to do. And just, don't complain. Just skip through it because the people that want all these details, if I made a short video, guess what? They're going to get all those details skipped over. So there's people out there that want to know these details. That's why I do this video. If you don't want to know those details, skip over them. Fast forward. <laughs> Or you'll get a smart aleck remark from yeah, me. Yeah. And on top of that, this video is also part of our vlog. This is part of our journey becoming full-timers. So this isn't all about facts and figures. This is some personal stuff, too. So that's what, that's what this is all about. There's a lot of people that will stumble onto this and not realize that. So this is not a uh, how-to or just a review only of this unit. This is a review of our unit. And the reason that we chose it so if you guys like what you see and you want to follow us on our journey here in our new rv and see what we may come across and what modifications we may make to this thing uh, click the subscribe button and if you would uh, like to see exclusive content uh, become a patron go ahead and click on the patron and we'll put videos up on that that the patrons get to see exclusively also you can connect with us on facebook or instagram mostly facebook we do a lot of facebooking and uh yeah go through our old shopping videos you're going to see a lot of rv shopping that we did before we got into this i have a playlist for that and we're going to close this out how are we going to close it out as always hope to see you out there bye, bye.